Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Pearls of Wisdom, that is right. NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Uh, I am going to be doing a trade video, as I often do. Those that follow me know we love to do the trades, don't we? Yep. We did Claude Giroux. Go check that one out. Connor Garland, we did. Mark andre Fleury, that one was a popular one as you can probably imagine. You might want to check them out. Uh, we also, we had Toffoli traded to Calgary a month before he ever got there. And uh, now we're going to be getting into JT Miller. Everybody's been, I've been getting letters and letters. Send your letters. I love your letters. Guido goes down to the mailroom every day with the sack and pours it all over the letter table and we all do the Perlo dance together. Yes. Sub yourself up. Sub yourself up as well. I'll send you a Mine HL Pearls of Wisdom necklace sent to you by the Perlocopter by Melissa or Hernandez. All right. Yes, we're going to do JT Miller. We're going to be looking at Frank Cervalli has been turned, turned himself into one of the biggest insiders in the game. Uh, and he has come up with uh, some, some teams that, JT Miller might go to. It just so happens as I was working on the JT Miller trade thing, he, he put this out. So I thought we'd look at that. It's from the Hockey Writers, Inc. And uh, we'll also look at some, poss some not possibilities. There's one not possibility and five teams that JT Miller may go to. So notice here the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Sub yourself up. I do a live show three to four days a week. Uh, usually from 3.30 to 5.30, but when you're subbed up, I'll send you a notification. We can talk hockey. Ooh, we can talk hockey. And the frolic. Oh, the frolic as well. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. It's who pays the bills, and they're very good. If you like all sports, all the four major sports, and things within those four major sports, head to Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Okay, let's take a look. At the article in question I should have the article up when I'm going to do that there you go Sarah Valley there the other Sarah Valley reported the New York Rangers Boston Minnesota Wild and Calgary Flames are interested in acquiring Vancouver Canucks forward JT Miller now we're gonna look at the possibility of JT Miller getting traded and why very difficult situation for Vancouver, but it's something that's been hovering over the heads of Vancouver fans for quite some time as they figure out if they are going to go for the playoffs or not going to go for the playoffs and all of those sort of things like that. Sarah Baldi, the other three teams that I've heard that have been interested in JT Miller are the Boston Bruins, Minnesota Wild, and Calgary Flames. All right, we're going to look at those three plus a few more teams that may be traded. Now, why would the Canucks want to trade? The Canucks are headed into an offseason where point leader Brock Besser will be a restricted free agent. He comes with a qualifying offer of $7. million. So if they want to qualify him, they got to call him at $7.5 million. As we look at, when we look at the Vancouver Canucks, we'll see that he might not be in that $7.5 million range. He's not that far away, though. The team has struggled. He struggled a little bit. But I think we'll, you'll find that uh, he may be worth it. He's 24 years old, and we'll look at it, which complicates things for them. Following Besser, Miller and Bo Horvat are unrestricted free agents in, the, in 2023, right? So you got to sign. All of these guys have to be signed, and they're already up against the cap as it is. Additionally, Elias Peterson will be on an RFA the following season. But Pedersen, Horvat, Thatcher, Demko, Quinn Hughes, therefore, the club is willing to trade everyone but Pedersen, Horvat, Demko, and Quinn Hughes. Makes sense. Certainly not trading Demko. Uh, Pedersen will um, sure bounce back. He looks like he could be a superstar. Rather roll the dice to see if that's going to happen. But the thing is, when you look at these, which ones are untradeable? They're all super young, pretty much. Uh, therefore, we're looking at youth movement still with Vancouver, which they always should have been in. Therefore, the Canucks will likely have no one, 
likely have to move one of their forwards and the return they can get from Miller is the best, so they think. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, Miller comes with a $5 million cap hit. Could be willing to retain 50%. I doubt that very much. And that's why we're, we're going to remove one of the teams right away in this for that reason. I think that if Vancouver wants to trade Miller, they really don't want they got They just said they had to sign all these guys. All right. So let's look at JT Miller and the Vancouver Canucks and see why they may do something like trading JT Miller. Now, I've been on Vancouver sites where they've talked about this and they say that it's stupid to trade JT Miller now. He's the heart and soul of our team. He's, a, he's an amazing leader for them. He's really grown into a role of a leadership role in Vancouver. No doubt about that. He also has said that he wants to stay there. And uh, that makes it even tougher for sure. He's got 53 points in 50 games. But as they said, they're going to have to sign Bo Horvat. They're not trading Bo Horvat. They're not trading Elias Pettersson, both of whom are supposed to be the top two centers on this team. Now, you could make a case that you could put Bo, Bo Horvat down in the third spot here. A little expensive for that spot, and he's got a little more offense, and you could keep JT Miller up here. Or you can play JT Miller on the wing. You can certainly make a case for that. But the fact of the matter is, if in signing the rest, Pedersen and uh, Brock Fesser, you are not going to be able to afford a player, one of these guys has got to go. And by the way, I did a Connor Garland trade possibility instead of JT Miller and keeping JT Miller. You may want to check that one out. Also, sub yourself up so you can see much more of this fine frolic. But I'm going to lean to the idea that, unfortunately, JT Miller is going to have to go. Because Pedersen and Horvat are going, are, might have learned from JT Miller. He's the heart and soul of their team. But how much is that keeping guys like Bo Horvat and Pedersen from doing that, which they need to do? See what I'm saying? Sometimes a guy can take over a room, and you've got to go down the road and say, I don't think we're going to be able to re-sign this guy. He's taken over the room. So he's preventing guys like Bo Horvat and Elias Pettersson to do what they really want them to do in the long term. I think JT Miller is probably on his way out. So let's look at what JT Miller brings to the uh, brings to the table as far as uh, contract is concerned. He's from Ohio, which is going to be interesting as we look at all the teams. Um, 6'1", 185, two, or 6'1", 218 pounds. Big boy. A lot of teams love that going into the playoffs, right? Base salary of $5 million, which is really good for a point-of-game center right now. For two more years yet, okay? And, yeah, for two more years. His point production, this is the one of the best seasons he's ever had, although his first season in Vancouver, he had 72 points in 69 games as well after he came over from Tampa Bay. His best production has been since he turned 26 years old. But it shows, it's showing that he keeps that production up pretty well. He's been, it's now three years where, you know, 46 and 53 isn't bad. 72 and 69, pretty much almost a point a game pace for the last three years. He's got a tremendous amount of value out there, for sure. So, let's look at some teams that he may go to. Now, first of all, it was mentioned in the article that Calgary would be a team, and it makes sense, Calgary. However, I think this was just done just before they traded for to Tyler Toffoli. And Tyler Toffoli eats up a lot of their cap room. In fact, I would say that they have no cap room at all anymore. Um, take a look here. Although they really could use a second line center. And if they're going all in on this year, which getting to Foley would mean that they're pretty darn close to going all, all in on it, I'm sure they would love to find a way to get a guy like JT Miller. Their current cap space is $519,000. So if they were to get JT Miller, they would probably have to move somebody out. And here's the thing. JT Miller has two years left on his contract. So... 
you got to sign Goudreau, which I hate to tell you, Calgary fans, I think he's going to be getting close to, if not over, $10 million a year. The guy's almost a 100-point player twice in his career. Those kind of players get around that kind of money. Matthew Kachuk is a restricted free agent. He's got to get nine. He's going to be getting eight, nine million next year. And then you're going to throw JT Miller in this bunch. Mangio, Mangio Panny, who are you going to remove if you get JT Miller this year? Uh, I think it makes it pretty much pretty difficult. In fact, pretty much impossible. Unless Vancouver does do what the uh, article said and retain salary. Could either retain salary or get Backstrom back, Mikel Backstrom, in the deal, who is making five million. Sure, but why do you want to do that if you're Vancouver, right? The whole point of this process is to remove the cap space. Now, if you can work out a three-way deal where somebody out there might have interest in Backlund, who's a little rich at five million, but is a solid two-way guy. And there's another team out there that could use a third-line center for the cup run, and they got cap room to take Backlund. I looked. I didn't see anybody, but you guys tell me if you see anybody that would be willing to take on a contract like that. Then maybe you're talking about something here. You know, that's, that's possible. But I think even at that, Miller's contract for next year puts Calgary kind of out of the boat. So I wanted to get that out of the way right away because, I, again, I get a lot of Calgary fans – wanting to upgrade that second-line center, and I don't blame him. I don't think Backlund is really the guy you want going into the playoffs when they're obviously going for it. That's why I said they should have been going harder after Eichel than they did. I don't know how hard they went, actually, but um, I, I would love to know what that package was because I, I would have been all over it. Anyways, next team, this is more a team that seems more likely. Remember we said that uh, JT Miller is from Ohio Columbus Blue Jackets and you're going to say well they're not a contender they're not going to they're going to be sellers or whatever the case may be you know what Kekko Lyonen is going to do some crazy stuff I think he's going to sign Lyonen myself personally as long as Lyonen wants to go there and if you've been watching the way the Columbus Blue Jackets play this year defense has not been in, like a, something that they've been Focusing on too much, let's put it that way. <laughs> and that's the way Lion A wants to play. If if you got Lion A, you can be a 40 goal scorer if you don't like ride his butt about his defensive game and they play a fun offensive game, which is looks like what they want to do in Columbus. And I don't blame them. It brings people to the seats, even if you lose, to play a high offensive game. And if you can figure out a way to do it and win consistently. Then it will bring even more people to the seat. So, enter J.T. Miller. J.T. Miller to the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's from Ohio. If you remember, they've had a pretty difficult time keeping players there. Panarin, Dubois, Jones wanted out. He went to Chicago. It's not the sexiest town in the world. So, finding guys, almost like Edmonton, Winnipeg, a lot of other teams out there have this difficulty in small markets to be able to find guys that want to make millions of dollars and hang out at a place that is for the most part considered boring now if you're a family person columbus is a great place apparently like amazing if you're a family person you like going taking your kids to soccer and all that kind of stuff like that if you're looking for the exciting nightlife which i think a lot of very wealthy young men enjoy Columbus isn't really for you. JT Miller isn't that young. He's 28 years old, and he's from Ohio. So he may just like to be there as a hometown guy. Now, the thing is, the return for JT Miller, I imagine, uh, he, oh, the other benefit is they have the cap space to do this. Okay. So let's look at some of the return. I don't think they're going to be really interested in guys like Max Domi, I was on the Columbus boards. They were offering up guys like Maps, Domi, Gustav Nyquist. They don't want to take any money in return. It's going to cost their first round pick, and maybe a guy, maybe a guy like Alexander Tessier, who's had some difficulties growing there. Uh, I could see them allowing that to be part of the deal, and I could see 
Vancouver not minding spending a little money there. He's he's going to be a restricted free agent in 2023. He's only 22 years old. He has a lot of offensive upside. It would be a guy that would probably be favorable for Vancouver to pick up. And so a first-round Tessier and a prospect probably. I don't think Kent Johnson, no way. You're not touching Kent Johnson. Forget about it. Don't even think about it. They're not getting you. Uh, maybe Corson Kuhlman's, though. There's a late first-round pick. Vancouver's going to need defense. By the way, everybody listening right now, sub yourself up. It's from Beaumont, Alberta. I'm from Alberta. I, I lived in Beaumont for a while. It's pretty cool. I didn't even know that. Uh, he's got 20 points in 29 games in the NCAA right now. Uh, that might be hard to give up, but I think for a number one center that wants to be in Columbus, I would do this deal. If I'm the Jets, or if I'm Vancouver, I should say, I uh, Kuhlman, a first, and Tessier. I think that's a fantastic deal for Vancouver. I love, they. the Kuhlman's is a guy that, uh, that is big, he's solid, he can skate, he's a future defenseman. They don't have anything in their prospect pool like that, really, right now. It would be great for them. Tessier is a flyer. They, you know, he's got upside, but he's not a for sure. And then, of course, the first round pick. Now, the first round pick may be difficult because now you're talking about that. That's going to be a conditional pick for sure. Or Chicago's first. They could give up Chicago's first that they got back in the Jones deal. Uh, I could see that. Chicago's first. Uh, Coleman's and yeah, it's rich. It's rich. But this is a point to game player. Now you say, well, you know, Columbus is rebuilding. Why would they do that? You will be Kekalainen, man. He's going to do things different. He's almost always does things different. I, I, think, I, I think if we're going to be surprised by what he does with this team and how fast he rebuilds it. Uh, one of the reasons why he took a guy like Igor Shinnikov in the first round that year was he was a late draft pick and he could play right now. This ownership, sponsorship is not going to be, is very restless for this team to be a playoff team. Kekalainen is brilliant. I could see him doing something like this. It would also help him be able to sign Lion A because Lion A would know that he has a number one center to play with. Interesting concept. Tell me what you think, Columbus Blue Jackets fans. Also, sign yourself, sub yourself up to the channel because there is much more trade frolic to come. All right, Boston Bruins is the next one. That was mentioned in the article. And uh, this would be tough for the Boston Bruins. However, I think they'll be bullish in trying to get something like this done. The problem is they got to sign Bergeron next year if they decide to. And there has been talk about maybe the not doing it. I'll tell you what, here's the thing. If they're not going to do it, they might as well not do this JT Miller deal. If they're not going to sign Bergeron, because that's a rebuild. For sure, no doubt about it, rebuild. No use giving up prospects that they don't have much of to get a guy like JT Miller. If they're going to sign him and it's going to be like a sweetheart deal somehow, which is basically right around where it is right now, uh, then maybe you might want to look at this as a possibility. They're going to have $13 million in cap space next year. Again, they got to sign Bergeron. Really, you got to hope that you sign him for no more than you already have. That leaves you about $5.5 million left. Uh, Jake DeBrusque may be part of this deal, but if you look at the deal that we just said with Columbus, as soon as Jake DeBrusque is part of it, he's from B BC, by the way. He has been playing better. It's possible they might think that DeBrusca still got a lot of upside left and be in on this deal. I personally wouldn't take a chance when I got that Columbus deal in my back pocket if that's what they have. Uh, but if they do, it's going to be the first for sure. First, Jake DeBrusque, and now I'm going to be looking for like Yurko, Yurko Vakaninen, who is looking like he is progressing into one fantastic uh, two-way defenseman in the Boston system. Something of that nature is what I'm looking at. And then there's been talk of JB and Lysel. 
Now, why would uh, Boston do this? Well, let's look at their depth chart and we'll see. Um, this would make them sort of a contender this year. Uh, Marshawn comes back. They have that super top line. You get JT Miller with Hall and, and, and Smith or um, now is a better second line center for Hall. Hall is a great passer. JT Miller is a great shooter. That they would that would work out well that way. It certainly lines up well with him in the lineup, no doubt about that. Now and then you've got Charlie Coyle down here with Hola and Felina. That's a pretty good third line. Uh, and then of course DeBrusque would be part of the deal. So you'd be using a younger player or another uh, depth forward. Bring up Oscar Steen. I love the guy. Why did they put him down? Honestly, he was great. Maybe he's not physically still ready yet because he's only five nine, but somebody of that nature back up and they could put it definitely makes them more of a contender this year uh if they can work out a way to have bergeron and jt miller fit in next year i could see this deal happening tell me what you think uh boston bruins fans should they even bother with this are they still if they get jt miller uh, can they really beat the tampas and floridas and colorados out there i'm not so sure how about you uh, also, sub yourself up, Boston fans, because we're going to have plenty of frolic like this all the, all the way up until the deadline and past. I love talking about this stuff. Okay, Minnesota Wild, this is the big one. Uh, it's, it's really kind of the big one. It's a difficult uh, possibility that it could happen. There's been lots of talk of JT Miller going to Minnesota because of the obvious, well, at least obvious to me anyways, uh, hole up the middle this year for Minnesota. The biggest question for me for, for doing a deal like this, and I know Minnesota fans hate to hear this. They hate it. I know because they come on my live show. Come on my live show, by the way. Sub yourself up. Get yourself subbed up. You can come on my live show from 3.30 to 5.30 weekdays Eastern time. Yeah, Ryan Hartman. Ryan Hartman's been doing yeoman's work, but he's not a sec. He's not a top line center. He's simply not. In fact, you know, he's been doing very well. But I don't think in the playoffs you want to have a Ryan Hartman in your top line. Or Joel and Joel Erickson Eck is good, very, very good. Uh, possibly future Selkie Trophy winner. Uh, still not what I would call a classic number one center. If you were to take JT Miller, who played with Zuccarello, by the way, in the rain, with the Rangers, right? I'm pretty sure Zook would be all over this. Uh, now you've got a true number one line. And you have uh, Joel Erickson back here. You can play Hartman down here with Fiala and Boldy. Man, you got a solid top nine here that is like just on the precipice, I think, of being a uh, contender. With that, without him, I'm not so sure. The question is, do you want to give up those picks now? Also, we also have to look at next year. JT Miller is not only making $5 million this year, he's making $5 million next year. Part of the deal, oh yeah, I said Fiala would be there. You know what? Fiala would almost have to be part of this deal. Because... Not for the cap room this year, but for the cap room next year. They're not going to sign him anyways. And they might be able to get away. Let's see, what are they going to have for cap room next year? $10 million, even though they have Zach Parise's going up to six and Ryan Suter going up to six for the from their buyouts to last year. They'd still have $10 million. You don't sign Goligoski. I guess Kalen Addison, you're going to give Kalen Addison a full shot. Keep JT Miller for next year, and then you're giving Rossi time to percolate and become the number one center that you you know you're we're hoping he becomes and believing that he becomes Marco Rossi there, and then go from there. Rossi's gonna you know you might be able to keep JT Miller over time. You might be able to resign him, although I think it's going to be fairly expensive. How, talking about expensive. Kevin Fiala would probably go back here, but only, I think, only 
Actually, maybe not. Yeah, only if they can find a way to trade Fiala right away. So it'll be a, get a three-way deal where Fiala goes to a team like, I don't know, Colorado Avalanche. They get a first-round pick for him there. Any team looking for offense for the playoffs, um, then they can pick up a first-round pick for that. So that would give that give you some value without giving up a prospect. Um, the, I think you would still have to give up this year's first. And they're going to be looking at, a, at one of your young defensemen, I'm positive. Either Carson Lambos or Ryan O'Rourke. So if you're willing to give up all that for JT Miller to give it, have a shot this year, and maybe next year as well, that's a lot. I like both of those players a lot. Lambos is almost at a point of game this year. I think both of them are going to be fantastic. Uh, I don't know which one they would like more. They're both left defensemen, probably have more value as a right defenseman. But the fact that they are both left defensemen leads me to believe that maybe Minnesota would be willing to give one of them up. So it would be a first, Lambos, and you know possibly even more, depending on – there could be a big fight for JT Miller. If you look at the Columbus deal that I gave, uh, gave out – um, right now, I would say the Columbus deal would be the one I'd be looking at, unless you want to up it even more than that. Tell me what you think, Minnesota fans. Would you up it even more than that to get a guy like JT Miller? Be a very exciting guy to have on your top line there. Um, let's see. Yeah, just tell me what you think, guys. And sub yourself up so you can continue getting this fine trade stuff. I do it all the time. It's fun. Uh, sub yourself. Make sure to hit the sub and like and all of that fine stuff. Now, of course, the New York Rangers, the big one, back to New York, back to the Rangers. This is these ones were not on there, uh, but if, when I go on the Rangers boards in Facebook, like it's they're all over this. The Rangers are all over. Rangers fans are all over J T. Miller going back. And I had a, I've had several of them like so bullish. Usually fans try to just give you like things that they don't really want and hope that that works. But I, all, all, a lot of fans are offering up Braden Schneider, a right defensive stud. He's amazing. Braden Schneider and a first round pick. And I've even heard Kako involved in this deal. Okay. Uh, now, I think Ryan Strom would go back in this deal, similar to the one we just did with Minnesota, where Vancouver would pick up Ryan Strom, trade him to another team that is looking for depth for center, for uh, center either for now and later or for now for the playoffs as a rental or otherwise, in which case they could get a second-round pick, what have you, for that. Then also, I like, the Rangers are stacked. You got Vitaly Kratsov, who doesn't even sound like he's ever going to play again. So you could go Vitaly, for, for the Rangers anyways. Uh, he's over in the KHL. He's putting up some decent numbers. He's a big kid. So you could have like Kratsov. Uh, hey, I, I, this is the offer I heard. Kratsov, Schneider, and Strom. I, I, I'm taking that deal if I'm Vancouver. I, I think that deal beats... Columbus's deal. And then trade Ryan Strom for a draft pick too. Like that is a good deal, man. Really good deal. Uh, especially for a Vancouver team that doesn't want to do a true rebuild. Both of those players are almost ready to play right now. I like it. What do you guys think, Rangers fans? Would you do it? Do you want to argue with your own Ranger fans or saying that they would give that up? Do you think that was too much? Is it for like that's a lot, I think. But I get it. If you think you're ready now, JT Miller, and you get him next year as well, playing with Panarin, and uh, you can play him on the wing, but they, you don't really need a winger, so uh, that's not really going to be a nece necessity. Uh, when you get Kako back, you can have Kako, JT Miller, and Panarin. That's a beautiful line, so I get it. Next, sub yourself up, everybody. Hit the like button, sub yourself up. I do a live show from 3.30 to 5.30. You can come on and talk to me about this and many other things in the NHL. Next, Carolina Hurricane. And uh, again, we're going to work out another deal 
where Vancouver picks up a f player that's going to be a free agent at the end of the year and, and retrades them. And they could do that to any one of the teams that we're talking about right now. Imagine if, you know, these players that were into JT Miller, say the Boston Bruins, they were, they were looking at JT Miller as a possibility. And they don't get him because Carolina beats them out. They may still want to upgrade that center position, and somebody like Trocek for a rental might be the guy that they look at. Um, so I'm going to say that Vince, Vinny Trocek would be part of this deal. It doesn't sound like Carolina is on the same page as him as far as salary for the next for, – for, or contract. Um, somebody out there probably will be. And I'm sure he'll go on the market and do very well. So you could take Vincent Trocek. You could, uh, Vancouver could trade Vincent Trocek as a rental. You know, get a maybe even a first. I don't know. But that would be a start. And you get JT Miller, who, as we know, played with a lot of these players that are on uh, Carolina. They have, they've done well to bring in a lot of ex-Rangers, like Jesper Faust and... Anthony D'Angelo and Ranta. I mean, there is Rangers all over the place here in uh, New York. And they did that. Oh, Brady Shea, right? Forgot about that. Brady Shea as well. So it, he would fit into the environment pretty much because there's so many ex-Rangers. Derek Stepan is another one. He would probably wouldn't. Uh, topple over the apple cart, as I like to say, as far as chemistry is concerned. I think he would fit really well here on the top when Seth Jarvis comes back. I guess, I don't know if he's injured or scratched. You got Seth Jarvis, JT Miller, and Marty Nietzsche's Svechnikov, Aho, Teravainen. Woo! This is a solid lineup, man. Um, even Jordan Stahl. Eric, Eric Stahl used to be a Carolina Hurricane, so he from the Rangers, so there's a lot of connection here. And I think it would be something that they would be interested in doing for $5 million a year for two years and then work on a contract with them afterwards. But that's not all. It's going to cost you more, of course, than Trocheck. Uh, we just threw around some very big names out there that, you know, they're your, that Carolina would be competing with. By the way, JT Miller doesn't have a no trade clause, so he can go, he can go wherever. Uh, I think it's uh, they'd love a defenseman. Joey Joey Keane has been working himself up. He's okay. I wouldn't call him a top prospect, but you could throw him in there for sure. Uh, a guy on my live stream talks a lot about Alexander Nikishin, and uh, I think they would hate to do that, but this is kind of what we're looking for, a top prospect with all the other offers we have. Noel Gundler has been doing fantastic in Sweden. That would be a guy that they would probably be looking at. Already drafted, getting close to ready for the NHL. And uh, the first round pick, possibly Drury. Not all at one time, but Nikishin. Uh, let's say, let's go Nikishin. Gundler and a first round pick. Are you willing to do that? Nikishin Gundler and a first round pick. I still, even with that deal, I think I go with the Rangers deal, to tell you the honest truth. So Carolina fans, sub yourself up. If you want to come talk to me about this as well, I'm going to post this on the Facebook boards. If you're reading it on the Facebook boards, please hit that subscribe button. Go over to YouTube, sub yourself up. Get part of the 3.30 to 5.30 live stream I do, and you can talk to me about if you think I'm crazy or whatever, if this is too much. This is the value that I'm hearing out there. So if you're not interested in this value, but, you know, this definitely makes Carolina more of a contender if they do something, do, the, do something like this. And he's got two years. So let me know what you think, guys. That's my full 42. Have a great day. Take care. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.